Hi, I'm Mike with Morgan Inspection Services. Today I want to try to clear up some misconceptions about our home's electrical system. There's a word that's used that causes a lot of confusion, and that word is grounding. Our home's electrical system basically has two different grounding systems, and believe it or not, they are basically unrelated. The first one is the grounding electrode system, which consists of the grounding electrode conductor that runs from the panel to a ground rod that's pounded into the ground. And the second one is the equipment grounding system, which consists of a ground wire that runs from every electrical receptacle, light fixtures, and other things in our home back to the electric panel. And these two systems really have essentially no relation to each other. The grounding electrode system, the one that runs to the ground rod, is designed to protect equipment in the home. And the equipment grounding system is designed to protect people. During home inspections, when I inspect an older home, often the receptacles are not grounded. And I'm often asked the question, will installing a ground rod ground those receptacles? The answer is no. A ground rod has nothing to do with receptacles being grounded. So you can have a ground rod installed and have every receptacle in the house not grounded. Or you can have every receptacle grounded without a ground rod. These systems really are unrelated. And in this video I'm going to show you some animations and demonstrations of what each of these systems do and what they don't do. And I think after this short video you're going to have a much better understanding of these two separate grounding systems on our home's electrical systems. So let's get started. Grounding, often called earthing, connects your electrical system to the earth itself. Its main purpose is to stabilize voltage levels and provide a path for excess electricity, such as from voltage surges or indirect lightning strikes, to dissipate safely into the ground. While these animations are not perfect, what I'm trying to show is the grounding electrode system conducting some of the voltage from an indirect lightning strike into the ground, rather than allowing it to travel through the home's electrical system and cause damage. It's important to note that the grounding electrode system is not a lightning rod. It cannot conduct the immense energy generated by a direct lightning strike into the ground. And on this animation, I'm showing a voltage surge indicated by the larger dots being directed into the earth by the grounding electrode system. These type of things happen on our home's electrical systems on a regular basis. Here's another way to illustrate this. This animation shows a couple of voltage surges entering the home and it shows that the grounding electrode system will maintain a stable voltage by routing those voltage surges into the earth. And in this animation, there's no ground rod. You'll see that those voltage surges go directly into the home's electrical system and could damage electrical equipment. So this is what the grounding electrode system does. It protects electrical equipment and components in the house. It's important to remember that the ground rod and grounding electrode conductor have nothing to do with tripping a breaker. Because of the high resistivity of the earth, very little current can flow through the ground rod. This is why grounding or earthing cannot trip a breaker. Let's look at this short animation. Here a hot wire has come loose in an appliance. Let's say it was a refrigerator. That wire is touching the body of the refrigerator. As a result, the current will flow back to the panel on the ground wire. Now this animation shows the current then flowing down the ground rod. Because the earth has such high resistance, not a lot of current flows here and it can flow indefinitely and that breaker will not trip because you don't have enough current flowing. Now this isn't what happens in reality. We'll look at what actually happens here momentarily. It's the equipment grounding system that provides a low resistance path for fault current to flow back to the panel and trip the breaker. Let's look at the equipment grounding system now and how it works. This is where terminology can be confusing. The National Electric Code refers to the bare or green wire running from your outlets back to the panel as the equipment grounding conductor. The entire network of these conductors is called the Equipment Grounding System. This system is created by bonding all metal parts of your home's electrical system together, such as the metal parts of your refrigerator or washing machine, also conduit and electrical boxes. It does this by running a ground wire to all the receptacles, light boxes, and other metal parts that could potentially become energized. The sole purpose of the Equipment Grounding System is to create a low resistance path for fault current to flow back to the panel. This low resistance path causes a very high current to flow. Remember, current is equal to voltage divided by resistance, so a very low resistance will create a very high current. This high current will ensure that the circuit breaker trips and removes the danger. Let's watch how this works. 
Here's a simplified electrical system. You have electricity flowing to this load. Let's just say it's a refrigerator. Right now, everything's working just fine. But now, a hot wire comes loose and touches the frame of the refrigerator. If someone walks up and touches the refrigerator, they could be electrocuted. Since the refrigerator is plugged into a grounded receptacle, the split second that that wire touches the frame of the refrigerator, a high surge of current will flow through the ground wire, causing the breaker to trip immediately. That's how the equipment grounding system protects people. The equipment grounding system and the grounding electrode system serve completely different purposes. The equipment grounding system protects people by ensuring that if a fault occurs, the circuit breaker trips to remove the hazard. The grounding electrode system, which is the grounding electrode conductor and the ground rod, protects equipment by stabilizing the voltage on the home's electrical system and dissipating voltage surges, but it does not clear faults or trip breakers. There's one more thing I want to emphasize here. The grounding electrode system is in use during normal system operations. You'll probably never even know that it's in use, but it's there 24-7 protecting the electrical system in your home. On the other hand, the equipment grounding system is only used during a fault condition. It's possible or even likely that a home will go many years without the equipment grounding system ever being used, but it's there just in case to keep you safe. Now here's a common misconception. Many people believe that installing a ground rod will ground all the receptacles in the home. This is not true. Installing a ground rod connects your electrical system to the earth, but it does not create a bonding path that protects your receptacles. Let's use an example of an older home. Most older homes were wired with a two-wire system, meaning that they have a hot and a neutral wire running between the panel and the receptacles in the home. These systems do not have an equipment grounding conductor to provide that path between the panel and the receptacles. If you install a ground rod, you still only have two wires running between the panel and the receptacles. Without rewiring the entire house to include a three-wire system, which would be the hot, the neutral, and the ground, you still only have two wires, and that ground rod will do nothing to ground the receptacles in your house. This is why grounding and bonding, or the ground rod and the equipment grounding system, are completely unrelated. To actually ground a receptacle, you need to run a ground wire from the receptacle back to the panel. Once that ground wire is in place, the receptacle is grounded, even if there is no ground rod. The equipment grounding system provides a low resistance path for fault current, ensuring that the breaker will trip in the event of a fault, protecting against shock hazards. So in summary, a ground rod does not ground the outlets in an older home, but a properly installed ground wire does. Understanding the difference between grounding and bonding, or between your grounding electrode system and your equipment grounding system, is the key to keeping your home and family safe. Remember, the equipment grounding system protects people by tripping breakers during faults, and it only comes into play during a fault. The grounding electrode system protects equipment by stabilizing voltages, and it is in use 24-7. A ground rod plays a critical role in grounding, but it does not ground your receptacles. So that's grounding in a nutshell. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I really hope you've learned something. I really appreciate you watching. I sure would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you enjoy videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day. Take care.